give good good morning. And um, well, I mean, they've they've certainly turned a lot more hawkish over the last couple of meetings. And I mean, certainly the the, the pivot's been pretty extreme since the last meeting. Of course, they just announced the start of tapering at the the last meeting, with the game plan being that they. Uh, wind wind down QE in June, but of course they very quickly changed their mind and they've accelerated suggested tightening in the dot plot as well. So, I mean, they've they've turned a lot more hawkish here. Is the bottom line? They turned more hawkish, but I'm I'm interested in why they turned more hawkish. They they told us for a very very long time that it was about transitory. There were those of us out there, and Jim, you know, you know how the conversations we've had over the last year or so, where there has been grave concern that this is going to be more persistent. Should the market be worried about the credibility of the Fed now they've done a full 180 turn? Well, I mean, I think forecasting is hard, <laughs> including for the Fed. So I don't think any of us can take the Fed's forecast or own forecast as, as gospel at, at this point. I mean, we've seen how much we've been surprised over the past year and even the past three months. So, I mean, time will tell. I mean, I think there are very good arguments why inflation will slow over time. I mean, the Fed obviously dropped the word transitory because they've become increasingly uncomfortable with that word. Not that they, they've really rethought the whole idea behind it and that the, the drivers of inflation initially um, were arguably very transitory. Ultimately, COVID will, will, will fade as, as a force. But if it's persisting longer than expected, just as COVID is persisting longer than expected, then ultimately there can be second round effects that start self-perpetuating. And I think that's what the Fed is worried about. I mean, they're worried about ultimately inflation expectations and wages so that what might initially be transitory truly, I mean, ultimately starts self-perpetuating. So they want to get, they want to try to get out in front of that or at least not fall too far behind. Yeah, that, that, that's the point, isn't it? They want to get in front, or are they actually falling behind? Yeah, I don't, I don't think they are. I mean, I think, again, there are very good reasons to think that inflation ultimately will slow. I mean, certainly you look at the, the details and you see things like used vehicle prices that are up about 45% since uh, pre, pre-COVID. And at some point, I mean, they're certainly going to have to slow down, but more than likely we even get a bit of transitory weakness uh, from things like used vehicle prices. But again, that hasn't happened yet. I mean, there were signs of it in July and August when we got some pretty tame core inflation numbers, but, um, and then the numbers just picked up again. So, I mean, as of now, I mean, the numbers still look very, very strong. And uh, fourth quarter numbers in general, inflation, growth, employment, I mean, everything looks very strong right now. Now, part of that, I think, is, is in terms of the growth side, especially, is a fading of the drag from Delta. I mean, you look at GDP, and it slowed from 6% plus in the first half of the year to 2% in the third quarter. Now, that wasn't all because of Delta, but that was part of it. And I think, likewise, as you're seeing a big pickup in the fourth quarter again, we're probably getting 6% or even more in fourth quarter growth, that a lot of that is the fading of Delta. So, again, you shouldn't extrapolate that. And, of course, there probably will be some negative from Omicron as well. 